CataractCoach.com. Cataract Quiz. What is this dark crescent? You start the Rex and you see that. Let's watch this tough case. So there's some visco acid going inside the eye. Surgeon sitting superiorly. All looks pretty good. Let's get the Rexus done. As you start the Rexus, whoa, whoa. What's going on here? The entire nucleus is moving. This is some extensive zonulopathy. Now, surgeon using some micro scissors here to start the capsule Rexus, puncture the anterior lens capsule. And then once that's done, you can get a Rexus done here. Sometimes you need to make a paracentesis with the other hand and hold on to part of the capsule as you're tearing it. Now, oh, that's a smart move. As you just have a capsule opening, putting an iris hook in, you can use a capsule hook too, which may be easier, but even an iris hook is okay. And now more viscoelastic going inside the eye. And now trying to get this rexus done. And as soon as you can, now look at that chopper on the left hand is going to give you some counter traction if you need it. There you go. And then as you get this rexus, rexus completed, you're going to need those capsule hooks, or iris hooks in this case, to get good support of the lens capsule. So this patient has extensive zonulopathy. So here comes another hook going in. Now, I prefer to use the capsule hooks, which are not always available in all operating rooms. Those ones are designed a little bit differently than these iris hooks and are a little bit more effective in really holding the lens capsule. But you can see here the left hand is kind of stabilizing the lens with the chopper, and then the right hand is getting that rexus done. Also, tripan blue dye here would have helped me, but looks good. Now expanding that out a little bit, let's get the rexus completed, almost done. Careful here not to make a baby rexus as well. That sometimes is, is, it feels like the inclination is to make a baby one. Now hooking the edge of the capsule. Now it's obviously pulling the iris too, but you really want to get that capsule rexus edge. Hey, that tell you about our podcast, the top odd podcast in all of ophthalmology. Yeah, it's really that good. It's amazing. It's an hour every week. Anywhere you find a podcast, we teach you literally the secrets to ophthalmology success. Now, here comes Faker Pro going inside the eye, just using another instrument to kind of bring the nucleus up and just kind of feed it into the probe. I like this super capsular technique in a case with bad zonulopathy. Why operate in the bag if the bag is so floppy and, and weak and so much zonulopathy? I kind of agree with you here. Better off just to get this thing out of the bag if you can, if you have a good size rexus, and then just aspirate all those pieces down and Faco it and, yeah, clean that up right easy. Now, the question is, what are you going to do for capsular bag support? Are you going to just take out the whole bag? How much zonulopathy is there? Is it just maybe, let's say, five, six, seven o'clock hours, and maybe you could put in one capsular tension segment? If you think it's very extensive, do you just take the whole bag out? And then do you just do a Yamani type procedure? Iris claw lens? What are you going to do here? So here at the end, taking out the, the oh boy, cleaning that up. Now you got the anterior vitrector, it looks like. Yeah, you got to clean this up because there's for sure vitreous prolapse. Look how deep that capsular bag looks in the eye. You want to get that up. Don't let it fall back. You want to bring that whole bag up. You need to just get rid of the whole bag. Yeah, bring all those pieces up. Hopefully nothing's falling back in the vitreous cavity. If you need to, put on a posterior viewing system. Even put on an indirect ophthalmoscope and look back there just to make sure nothing has fallen. So now getting rid of all that capsule. Now the patient is completely um, aphakic, no capsular bag. And again, do the vitrectomy here. I don't like to use the main incision. I'd rather do two pairs and TCs. The problem with using the main incision for the anterior vitrectomy is it leaks. It's too leaky. And you're going to keep getting prolapse and prolapse and prolapse. That's better through a para. And I'd make the paras a little bit farther apart. Now here comes the lens. Looks like what we're doing here. Looks like an iris claw lens. There you go. We don't have those in the USA. Don't get any bright ideas if you're in the US like me. Grab that optic there centrally. Tuck it behind the iris. Use your hooks or your other second instrument to kind of enclavate the iris into those claws and do that on both sides. And once you got that, you got a nice stable position. Hey, check out that podcast. Remember, every single week in your episode, I promise you'll learn so much. It really is that good. You will thank me later.